Today, the latest weapons, coupled with the fighting skill of the American soldier, stand ready, on the alert all over the world, to defend this country, you, the American people, against aggression. This is the big picture, an official television report to the nation from the United States Army. Now, to show you part of the big picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. There's a new look about going overseas today, summed up in the words, Operation Gyroscope. Formerly, when a soldier went overseas, he had no idea of his assignment before shipping out, and usually he joined his new unit as an individual replacement. Now into the picture comes Gyroscope, the Army's newly developed system for rotating entire combat units between home and overseas bases on a fixed schedule. Military leaders and servicemen of every rank, not to speak of their families, are watching the gyroscope experiment with intense interest. Why the interest? The reasons will be clear when you hear and see the picture story of Operation Gyroscope. Captain James Bounds, reporter for the big picture, recently accompanied the first unit to move overseas since gyroscope went into effect. Captain Bounds. Two airborne regimental combat teams were to be involved in the first gyroscope move. One unit was in Japan, the other a long way off at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And it was to Fort Campbell, home of the famous angels of the 11th Airborne Division, that I went to see how a unit prepares for a move overseas in the gyroscope era. First off, what about a gyroscope? Well, as any Navy man or dictionary will quickly tell you, it's an instrument often used to resist the rolling of a ship or airplane. You might say it helps maintain balance, stability. I began to understand why the code name gyroscope at an officer's briefing session of the 508 Airborne Regimental Combat Team. Gentlemen, I have brought you together here this morning to discuss our move to Japan. You're all aware of the importance of gyroscope to the Department of the Army. We will be the first unit to complete its portion of the first move in gyroscope. There's another first. We will be the first unit, the 508 Airborne Infantry Regimental Combat Team, to travel by air over an ocean, complete tactical move. And a complete tactical move of nearly 4,000 officers and enlisted men across the country, then over the Pacific to Japan, is a job requiring coordination and planning of the highest order. Everything was spelled out on paper, from the standard operating procedure for packing office records to the assignment of billets upon arrival at the destination. I suppose that's one reason the operation looks so smooth. Files into packing cases, and cases systematically into trucks, a crisply executed sequence, like Reese to Gilliam to Hodges. Some 1,000 dependents of the men of the 508 were due to move out too, heading for San Francisco's port of embarkation and the trip over. A sea voyage for them, with the soldiers going by air. I saw many a boy's bicycle loaded aboard, little girls weren't budging if they were separated from those little dolls. Not long afterwards, the railroad station at Fort Campbell was the scene of a lot of temporary goodbyes. Temporary because for the first time in Army history, men were able to put their families aboard a train heading for a west coast port and plan to meet their families upon arrival in Japan. I watched a veteran army sergeant saying goodbye and made a mental note to ask him what he thought of gyroscope. I had a hunch it was different from the way he had gone overseas before. With a final wave from the commanding officer and the other husbands and fathers at the station, the train pulled out for the start of a long, long trip. With the dependents on their way, the last few days before the 508's departure raced by. The afternoon before moving out, 
I stood on a company street as the sound of a whistle pierced the air. tomorrow morning you will move to the marshalling area. At 1500 hours this afternoon, I will be back to make an inspection of your bags, your clothing, your equipment, and your individual weapons. When I come back at 1500, I want you to have those things clean. And I mean clean. Mark Campbell. Sergeant Phillips, could I see you a moment? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sergeant Phillips, so this is uh, Sergeant Wilson, Sergeant Phillips. And Pleasure, Sergeant Sergeant Phillips. Pleasure. You can go ahead and uh, wrap it up. <coughs> yes, uh, Sergeant Will, uh, Phillips, I couldn't help but overhear your discussion with the men. You mean you're going to actually take the boys out in the morning at 0500 hours? Yes, sir. This gyroscope's the best thing that ever happened in the Army. Why do you say that? Well, from the Army's viewpoint, sir, it gives the unit the benefit of the men of its train. The general purpose behind the plan is to build up the units that are going to remain intact. You get your men, you train them, and you keep them. Now, I've been in the Army a little over 12 years, and I've trained many men. Just at the time you get them up to the point where they're a good fighting soldier, he comes out in a blasted order and he ships to another unit. <laughs> but now you're talking about the Army. What about the men themselves? Well, I think for the men it's excellent. The man comes in the army, the hardest thing he has to do is make friends. This way, if he gets in the unit, he makes his friends, he stays with them, and keeps his whole tour of duty right in the same outfit. Well, now, you've covered the army and the men. What about yourself personally, Sergeant? Well, I'm very proud of my outfit, sir, and I'm proud of the men that are in it. And besides that, I'm a married man. I get to take my wife with me in 13 days. The old system would take me six months. Well, good luck this time. Probably see you over there. Thank you very much. Bye, Sergeant. It's a pleasure. Sir. You bet. Morning of the departure, Duffel bags were stacked at the head of the company street, then checked to make sure the contents were secure. And the sun had barely come up when the last contingent of the 508 was marching out of Fort Campbell. Within a short time, the advance units of the 508 reached the marshaling area near the airport. Here they would stay until boarding the planes. Time moves slowly in those last few hours before a trip. Everything's ship shape. Just wait. Some made good use of the free time, reading up on the country where they soon would be stationed, the fabulous island of Nippon. In Japan, meanwhile, a final taste of Japanese culture was being absorbed at the other half of Operation Gyroscope. This was a time for sayonara, Japanese for goodbye. This was a time for the farewell speeches, simple, sincere words between friend and friend, Japanese and American. Time for the fragrant aroma of such delicacies as shrimp tempura. Time for a few remarks by a representative of the 187th Airborne Regimental Combat Team. Remarks adding up to thanks, people of Japan. Then the table set in distinctively delicate style, chow time Japanese fashion. And it's never too late for another chopstick lesson. Yes, the last days in Japan were full of interesting activity. Some play, but mostly work. Gyroscope took plenty of planning on the 187th cent, too, so that everything would go smoothly. Right up to the end, the 187th continued its rigorous training, guaranteed to make the troopers, in their own spirited words, lean and mean. A training jump was scheduled shortly before the unit was to leave Japan.
With the paratroopers, everybody jumps, from the clerk to the rifleman, from the parachute rigger to the cannoneer. In the last year of their overseas tour, the 187th had jumped on training missions in various areas of Japan and Okinawa, always staying combat ready in the paratroop tradition. Coordinated with the final jump program were the departure preparations, which went rolling onward. The many trophies won by 187th units and men were carefully dismantled and packed. Then crating, banding, stenciling, and finally, loading. And at the post office, many Arakasan, as the Japanese call the paratrooper, mailed home souvenirs, bought in exotic places like Beppu and Oyanahara, and now bound for more familiar towns. Back in the United States, and the other half of Operation Gyroscope, the 508 Airborne Regimental Combat Team was set to leave the marshalling area near the airport. The final word of instruction, and the 508 moves out to Campbell Air Force Base. This will be the first time an Army unit of this size has been airlifted over either ocean on such a long trip. Forty-three giant C-124 Globemasters were waiting to airlift the troopers to Travis Air Force Base, California. Then on to Hickam Air Force Base, Hawaii, to Wake Island, and finally, at Shia Air Force Base, Japan. The whir of propellers and the lead plane roared into the skies. regular intervals, guided by the staccato instructions of the tower, the planes took off. What do you do when you spend over 52 hours in the air? Well, if you're anything like the men of the 508, you will eat and talk, and loudly too, I realized, so as to be heard above the roar of the motors. Or be strictly GI and shine your brass. Chew some gum, maybe. You can fight the five o'clock shadow, or maybe write a letter home. There's always a spare hour to snazz up those trooper boots. Or maybe try a hopefully hot hand at bridge. Just peer out into the sky, watching those props hurtle you westward through the air. Nightfall at Ashia Airfield, 52 hours after takeoff, finds the first contingent off the plane headed by the 508's commanding officer. Operation Gyroscope is running smoothly. Throughout the night and on into the next day, Ashia control towers call in the huge Globemasters. Dawn finds the plane still landing, descending slowly over the graceful Japanese landscape. From the neatly pressed uniforms and the general appearance of the 508, you'd never know they had spent so many hours aboard a crowded plane. A formation, and all present and accounted for, sir, and they're on their way again. The final destination is fairly close now. The 187th is almost set to go. Dependence furnishings are packed and loaded aboard trucks. Then 
spend the last meal at camp before pulling out. Most of the soldiers will fly home. Dependents will return by ship. Camp Chigamaga, one of the three home camps of the 187, the big day toward which everything has been pointing, the turnover of command to the commanding officer of the just arrived 508. Side by side, one honoring the other, the flags of the 187th and the 508, two of America's finest fightingest outfits are brought onto the parade ground. And as the band plays and the reviewing dignitaries look on, the transfer of command is completed. Yes, the 508 has arrived, and one half of the gyroscope mission has been accomplished. Out of camp, homeward bound, goes the other half of gyroscope, the 187th Airborne Regimental Combat Team. Japanese of all ages wish them farewell in Godspeed. Stepping proudly through a Japanese version of a Wall Street ticker tape parade, the 187th finally reaches a railroad station where they will board the trains to the airport. Farewell speech by the mayor, then bouquets of flowers as testimonials of Japanese affection and goodwill. The Sayonara signs, meaning goodbye, are everywhere as the men board the trains. A Japanese swing band serenades as a soldier named O'Neill, clearly a favorite, gets special attention. All aboard, and the homeward bound special train chugs out of the station. The noise drowns out the Sayonara's now, but the idea comes through. The Japanese people are sorry to see the boys go. Relaxing in the coaches, the men have a last look at the perennial face of Japan as it moves past in a bewildering succession of small farms and paddy fields and fishing villages. Meanwhile, into Yokohama Harbor steamed the ship bearing the dependence of the 508. You can be sure that the men of the outfit were preparing a tender welcome to Japan for their wives and children who crowded the rails and portholes. music of a brass band echoed across the wharf. A welcoming party came aboard with flowers for the wife of the commanding officer. Representatives of the Japanese community were on hand to extend greetings to the families of the 508. With each man of the family shepherding his brood, the wives and children of the 508 finally set foot on Japan.
paperwork was kept at a minimum so that the new arrivals could be processed quickly and efficiently. A few of the wives were Japanese girls returning to Japan, thanks to gyroscope. Uh, how long uh, have you been in the United States? Three years. Three years. Uh, where did you meet your husband uh, over here in Japan? Japan, is, he was uh, 11 years old before, and then, uh, that's uh, 1946. And uh, where, whereabouts in the country here uh, did you meet him? Uh, what part? Well, I mean um, up to north. Up north, yes. I see. Um, Yoshiko, uh, how, did, how did you enjoy your trip uh, over on the boat? Well, this time I have a lot of trouble because I've got a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> you got two, two so, boys here. Yeah, I think it's a miserable trip. <laughs> I really need a husband to help me this time. Well, I understand that uh, your husband isn't here, but that you're going to meet him in uh, Camp Wood. You're leaving on the train today yes. to meet your husband. Yes. Uh, tell me, uh, are your parents uh, still living? No, I have only one sister. One sister. Yes. And uh, where does she live? In Morioka, my hometown. I see. Uh, are you going to uh, get a chance to visit her as soon as you can? Well, uh, my husband, my my father's uh, died right after I go to the United States, so I like to go to the cemetery and uh, see my father. Well, how did you like uh, life in the United States, Yoshiko? Well, I think so. Any place you go, I think the same. The people are the same, and the people over there are very kind, real nice for me, and. The, my mother-in-law and father-in-law, wonderful people. Well, are you glad uh, to get back to Japan to visit some of your old friends again? Oh, yes, I will all <laughs> right away. <laughs> uh, tell me, Yoshiko, what do you think of uh, this Operation Gyroscope, uh, whereby uh, you can go with your husband wherever he goes? Well, this, well, it surprised me. I don't know what to say. Still, I can't breathe, you know. You, th you think it's a good deal? Yes, it's real nice. The ship didn't remain empty long. No sooner were the dependents of the 508s ashore than the family men of the 187, with wives and children, went aboard for the trip home. For some of the children, born in Japan, this would be the first time they would see their country. The Army was anxious to get reactions to Operation Gyroscope. Sergeant, how long have you been with the 187? Uh, I've been with them approximately 18 months. All that time you've spent here in this country? I have, you know, with the exception of 93 days in Korea. Well, what is your job with the regiment, Sergeant? I'm a first sergeant of support company. And uh, how did you like your tour of Japan? I liked it very much. Uh, well, you have anything to say about uh, Japan, Mrs. Well, Bryant? I enjoyed my visit very much over here. Well, what do you uh, people think of Operation Gyroscope, whereby uh, Sergeant, you can keep your family with you wherever you go. I think it's a very good idea. Keeping your family with you, traveling together concurrently, is a very good idea. And I think it's going over big with the rest of the boys. Well, we're glad to hear that you think it's a good deal. Amid the salutes of harbor whistles, the gangplank was lifted. Music blared forth again as the gangway hatch clanged shut. One last wave up at those on deck. A flurry of activity on the wharf, and slowly the ship pulled away from Japan. At the airport, men of the 187th marched toward the Globemasters that had air ferried the 508 to Japan. Within a short time, they would be marching off the planes, onto the soil of their own country. For Operation Gyroscope had proven that the Army, in conjunction with troop carrier aircraft, is capable of moving large units over vast distances in a matter of hours rather than weeks. From the standpoint of the men and their families, 
gyroscope has given their careers a stability Army life never had before, with a resulting boost in morale and unit spirit. One every two hours, the huge planes thundered into the air. Throughout the day and night, 43 Globemasters throbbing through the sky. And as the shadow of the final plane passed over the Japanese farmers in the fields, heading toward the Pacific and home, Operation Gyroscope passed into history. Yes, from Fort Campbell, Kentucky, to the islands of Japan is a long, long way. But for several thousand soldiers, maybe it didn't seem so long, thanks to the speed of air travel and the planning of Operation Gyroscope. Thank you, Captain Bounds, for your report on the Army's newly conceived rotation plan, Gyroscope. Now, this is Sergeant Stuart Queen, inviting you to be with us again next week for another look at your Army in action on The Big Picture. The Big Picture is a weekly television report to the nation on the activities of the Army at home and overseas. Produced by the Signal Corps Pictorial Center. Presented by the United States Army in cooperation with this station. You too can be an important part of the big picture. You can proudly serve with the best equipped, the best trained, the best fighting team in the world today, the United States Army.